Okay, everyone, it is time once more for the Golf Bidder Second Hand Challenge. It's myself, Peter Finch, and Rick Shields. We're down here at Golf Bidder HQ for the fifth and the final time. so far and like Pete said this is the fifth year and this is the deciding year because if you've watched golf bit of challenges in the past it's two to Pete two to me so we are now gonna get into golf bidder it's just about to shut we're gonna raid the warehouse for 500 pounds each of golf club before we take them out on the golf course if you're new you've not seen the videos before make sure you subscribe after we've picked our clubs now on this video, we're gonna jump over for the front nine on my channel and back nine for Pete's. 500 pound each to spend. I'm excited, apparently they've got the most stock ever they've had in Golf Bidder. If you don't know what Golf Bidder is, it's a company that buys second hand golf clubs and gives you money for old clubs that you might have lounging about. And it's also an outlet to buy new and used golf clubs. And you're about to see what an amazing I place know. it is inside. We say it every year, it still blows my mind every time I see it. Do okay. it, say it. What is it? What is it? Like the Aladdin's cave. There we go. <laughs> right, we're inside. So, like I said, they're just about to shut. So we've got free reign of the place. Uh, we're going to jump on the computers. We're going to pick our clubs. Five hundred pounds to spend. I wish you all the best of luck, Peter. I also wish you the best of luck. Good luck. Five hundred pound each. So the way that we pick the secondhand clubs is we log on to the Golf Builder website and you guys can do this as well. Just try and build your perfect bag for 500 quid. We're gonna go through, we're gonna pick, then we're gonna get into the warehouse at the back, which is absolutely mind blowing. We cannot overstate how excited you would be if you are a golf nerd like me and Rick. So, shall we set a limit on this? 10 minutes. Oh, literally, I'm gonna be done in a few minutes. I feel like I've prepped this year better than I have in other years. And I've, I'm going to pull out some old classics from Golf Bidder Challenges in the past. Okay. So, yeah, listen, you take 10 minutes, I'll take a few minutes, three or four minutes, give me. Okay. I think I've found a set of irons which are perfect for me. Okay, so I said I was going to be quick, Pete. I've got one more club to pick, and it's the club that I'm spending the most amount of money on. So I'm going to take my time on this one, but I've got all clubs picked bar one. Just got my driver and my three wood. I'm kind of motoring along now. I'm going to just go on instinct this year. Going on instinct. And that is me done. Done. That is me done. That was, rid that was ridiculously quick. Well, like I said, I've got I've got an idea of... I did kind of have a little bit of a look before I came down. But I have an idea of what I wanted. And everything here is much more fitted to my game than previous challenges combined, I think. I'm really... I thought this was going to be easy. I'm really struggling to pick the last club, which is my putter. I've got the most amount of money to spend. I've got about £100 to spend, or just under. I'm, I feel like I might have to stretch the budget slightly, Pete. I might have to go a tiny bit over, but have I ever stuck to budget? Right. Uh, okay, I've got one, I've got one, I've got one. Uh, budget, good price, good quality, done. Right. Order made. That's my £500 and a tiny bit more spent. Okay. Have you done for price? I am two pounds over. Okay, I'll let you off. Because I think you're gonna, you're gonna to be 28 pounds over. <laughs> let's get into the back. Let's pick our clubs. Let's see what we've got. Ready for battle for the final ever Golf Bidder Challenge. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you watch last year's Second Hand Club Challenge, you'll know that I picked a club in my bag that was a bit old, wasn't the longest, but my God, was it accurate. So you thought, you know what, why change tradition? I'm going to go with the same or very similar driver from last year, and it's this. The Titleist Pro Titanium 905T. Little pear-shaped design in fantastic condition. It's old and it's probably one of my cheapest clubs I've got in my bag, but 
But honestly, if that performs anything like last year, I will be delighted. The big boy in the bag, Titleist 905T. So I'm going to start with the putter. Now the putter that I've chosen is, it's very sentimental. So this, very classic, Odyssey White Hot number two with the White Hot insert. Very basic, very simple putter. But this is the exact putter that I use when I won a qualifying tournament to get into the Faldo series. So kind of a, at a decent amateur level over here in the UK. Little 12 foot putt on the last, pretty flat got over it, hit this putt, pushed it, but I misread it and it broke back into the hole and I ended up winning the qualifier. So I've got some good memories of this putter. The head is in decent condition. I mean, this putter must be a good 15, 18 years old. And it's also got a brand spanker of a super stroke grip on there as well. I, I doubt for sentimental value and quality through the ages, the Rick's gonna have a better putt than this. Fact. So I'm still in the tightly section because the next club I'm going to pick is my three wood. Now, if you're a fan of the channel, you know that I'm in love with my three wood that I currently use, Old Blue with the Cobra. But I tell you a secret, that was my first love. My first love sits here. There's a three wood that I used to carry in my bag as a junior that I absolutely loved, and it's actually the little brother for my driver. And it sits there. It is. Oh my goodness, this is unreal. Let me just check the shaft. Yes, first off, this is the shaft it's got in it. Aldila NV Green was the talk of the town back in the day. Unbelievable shaft. And it is attached to that head. Tightlist Pro Trajectory 904F. It's the little brother to my driver, 15 degrees. For me, I don't want a three wood to go particularly too far. I want it to be controlled. Hopefully be great into hitting into par fives. My long game is hopefully being looked after by Titleist. Let's hope it works. <laughs> it's bad, isn't it? Just look at that. It's a, it's, I, I've never seen a shinier aisle anywhere. It's just amazing. Look at it. And I've tried to stay away from these. So these are the Mizuno irons. There was a set on here that I thought, oh, that looked really, really good. But it would have pushed my budget just that little bit over. So I've gone for an older set of irons, three to pitching wedge in an X-stiff shaft, red dot, so it's slightly flat, so it suits my swing a little bit as well. We've got the S59s. Now, it is I, one of the things with pin clubs, and this is what always amazes me about them. So this is a cast set, and if you think about the age of these clubs, the condition that they are in is unbelievable. And one of the good things I really like about Golf Bidder and their website is how understated they are. So I think these are classed as fair condition. These are amazing condition considering how old they are. Now the lofts may be slightly weaker, but I've got a three iron, so that's fine. It goes all the, through, all the way through to pitching wedge. And this set of irons, it allowed me to actually spend a little bit more money in areas of the bag, which I think are gonna be very important with the golf course that we're playing. Look at the quality, look how good nick they are. Damn. Mm. We're in the wedge section here at Golf Bidder. The selection is actually ridiculous. <laughs> I've seen so many wedges in my life. Two sets of wedges that I like. I like Vokey wedges. And again, growing up as a kid, I always liked to kind of walk down memory lane in these challenges. I had an old school wedge, which I loved, and it actually fits perfectly in the loft for my irons and the rest of my wedges, because it does it in odd lofts comes in this section, the Cobra wedges. Cobra have not been really known for wedges in the most recent years, but there was a time where they dominated the cool status in wedges. Ah, oh, here she is. And it's this. It's not the original, original Trusty Rusty, but it's the new Trusty Rusty. And why I've picked it is because not many wedges come in 53 degrees. And I feel like the makeup of my irons fits a 53 degree perfectly. Rusty face, black shafted, that is the first wedge in my bag. I've gone for a Vokey wedge. I've gone for a 58 degree Vokey wedge. And I've gone for one that only gets better with age. It's an oil can finish, it's rusting. 58 degrees, literally the cheapest golf club in my bag. That has seen many bunker shots and many duff chips. And hopefully it won't see any more. 
The next wedge in my bag is my 58 degree. I've got my woods, I've got my wedges. Next up, let's go and pick up my irons. Ah. Wedges, my guilty pleasure. Is there anything better than hitting that solid strike and seeing the ball rip back across the green? It is one of the truly most memorable and beautiful things in golf. Or so I'm told, but I'm pretty determined to make it happen for myself. And the first wedge that I've chosen is a forged one, Cleveland 588. Now it's a 52 degree and I've kind of missed out the sand wedge. So I'm going from a 52 degree to a 60 degree in my other wedge. This is part of the bag that I've actually managed to save quite a lot of money on. But I think they're going to be sneakily good. I mean, a forged wedge, 52 degree, it's a Cleveland. Again, the head condition is in remarkably good shape considering its age. You can still see where the milling has gone on. So I know that the face will still have that little bit of friction. The grooves look pretty sharp. They look pretty decent as well. There's obviously going to be a little bit of wear and tear over the years. But 52 degree, 10 degrees bounce. I'm going to be using this club, I think, quite a lot tomorrow. Now, this, I believe, is probably going to be the biggest risk for me. It's an old wedge. So it's a Mac Daddy 2. 60 degrees, it's got 10 degrees of bounce but it's, it's old and it's also got a really weird heel and I really don't like the look of it. I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell, maybe I have to get some close-ups on it as well. It's got like a weird cuppy offset on the heel. It actually makes the shank look absolutely ginormous and the head size as well, it's not really that big. When I open it up, the bounce is kind of quite large. So me being a fan of lob wedges, I use lob wedges all the time. This I think is my biggest risk, but it's also potentially opened up some of my biggest rewards when we get to the longer clubs, which I think I'm gonna absolutely dominate Rick in. Normally I, I go for irons that I've used or owned or tested, but I've not. I've gone for a set of Callaway irons because again, I had to stick to budget and I've gone. That looks like them. Yeah, that's them. I've gone for these three iron down to pitching wedge and are these the Callaway X Forged. The crack shaft for me, grip's perfect. Right, that's the next clubs in my bag. I've got a putter to go and also a last little club that is essential to my set. So this section of the bag, this is what's gonna be filled up next with a three wood and a driver, which I'm absolutely delighted to have. And the three wood is this. Look at this. Tylists have always done, I think personally, some of the best three woods, some of the best fairway woods in golf. I mean, the design doesn't really change from year to year. It's pretty much the same, especially when you look down on the top. And the 915F was just a fantastic three wood when I tried it. It's also got a shaft I love as well. So it's the Adela Rogue. It's 70 grams, X flex. And when this goes behind the ball, it is very confidence inspiring. It's also quite a strong flighted three wood. Now, there may be a little bit of a gap between this and my three iron, but what I'm hoping for is if I can't quite get to grips with my driver, this is an automatic backup. That's something I've struggled with in past challenges. If the driver's not been working, then I've lost basically. So if the driver doesn't work this time, I'm gonna be relying on this bad boy to hit some drillers down there as well. And I think I could get the sting going on with these as well. If you saw the golf bidder challenge last year, you might have seen I, I used the putter that I actually really liked. And it's one of the Odyssey putters. It's this one. Here we go. You ready for this? Odyssey. O works one. Micro face insert. Vice versa head for better alignment and accuracy on all putts. Super stroke, mid-sized handle, perfect for my very nervous hands and absolutely bang on. For me, this is the biggest investment in my bag. This cost £100. I could have gone cheaper with a putter, I could have, but you know what I didn't want to. It's the club I'm going to use for the most of the challenge tomorrow, so I needed a club that I trust. Right, last club to pick, the secret weapon, the club that I can't really go out and play golf with without. Let's go and find it. Driver section. I can imagine this is where most people would start to lose their minds. And I'm no uh, different than that because I've chosen a driver which I think is probably 
it's probably the best I could have chosen for the budget, but also it's probably one of the best drivers that TaylorMade have ever produced. So this is one of the original M1s. So it's got the movable weight technology, that T-Track in the bottom. It's a 9.5, but I can obviously move that down to get a little bit more steam off it. And this is the most expensive club in the bag that I've chosen. It's held its value remarkably well, because I remember a time when TaylorMade drivers, you know, they were coming out that often that they just didn't hold the value at all. But the M1 and the M2, yes, 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 yes. I, I hit some absolute bombs when I got my original one of this. It's got a good shaft, I like it, the Kurokage, X-Flex, only 60 gram as well, so I can shift it, I can move it. Off the tee tomorrow, I'm gonna smash it. I'm gonna smash him. He's had the better go of it over the last few years. Not this time. Not this time. Not this time. <laughs> okay, the club, I cannot play golf without. And no, from not everyone watching, it's not a chipper. Do they do chippers here, actually? Now it's probably the club, in fairness, that I've sacrificed the quality of the rest and the price. Because if I didn't have this club, I would have had a lot more to spend on the rest of my set. But for me, I feel like it's an essential club I have in the bag. I'm gonna take a sticker off. It's this one. Oh my goodness, this is class. That's what we need, everybody. That's what I need in my bag every day. And look at that. Tight list. 712U. Surprisingly maintained its value unbelievably well over the years and that is only a sign of greatness that is a sign of a good produced golf club two iron in the bag is this and that is my golf bag complete let's go and see what finch has got let's see if he can match that bad boy set right mate shall we have a look at each other's bags i don't need to make you circle in this like <laughs> <laughs> like some kind of predatory cat or a vulture depending on which uh, which way you look at it mate stop circling and start talking okay so this is what you picked i feel on first impression you've heavy loaded price wise with the woods not bad are you? i no, mean not bad. that how the hell have you got an m1 because that can't be cheap mate i'm an experienced player at the uh, golf of the game I think that's gonna smash my driver to bits. Oh, and really? I was worried about that because I've gone for a driver that isn't as powerful as this. Okay. Not that, not that bothered about your three wood. Your irons are so-so. I had a set of these. I, I'd never liked them because they never had a hosel. They just look unfinished. And I'll be honest, not particularly very appealing. They're not the softest feeling. Uh, also not the most forgiving. Um, wedges, you've definitely gone cheap here. You're, you know what's surprising, Pete? You're normally, do you often pick on cosmetics over performance? Mm -hmm. Your bag always looks the best. I feel like you've not gone on cosmetics and I don't feel like you've gone on performance, bar this. <laughs> so you just basically think it's a crap bag. That, uh, what, that's basically what you're thinking. Though. You've gone, you've got, I understand that you've gone expensive there and then cheap there. What are the prices? So driver was 141. Impressive. And then fairway, 80. Impressive. Yeah. Irons, also. what, 120? 140. And by the way, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. I do not agree with you on those irons. They're like, not I'm, the best I'm, looking. I'm willing to say that the wedges, yes, that's where I saved most of my cash. They're good irons, mate. I just feel like, if I could count on you for anything, it was a good looking set. And I, I feel like, you've not only let me down on it, but you've let your viewers down. Because you're known for good looking irons and sets, right? But hey, hey, listen, if it's about performance for you, if that's where you're going with this now, that's fine. That's going to smash me to bits. And that's what I'm scared of. You should be scared. I'm scared of that scared. in a big way. Okay, um, wedges, what? They must have been pretty cheap. Yeah, wedges were 49, 49. Okay. And then putter? Putter, that was cheap. So that was 43. So total price? Uh, just over. 502, so I'll chuck a couple of quid into the pot. I'll let you off, because I think I'm over as well. You're always over. You've never been under, ever. Listen, I'm a loyal customer. I should be getting discount. I feel like we've reversed roles. That looks like the set of a player, which should be you. I would I would say, Rick, that this looks like an incredibly unimag unimaginative set of golf clubs. For a start, isn't this just the drive you had last year? It's not exactly the same. It's pretty much the same, isn't it? What did you have last year? Tight list. 
nine-o-something. Nine, Five? Ah, I think it was, though. So it's a T. Exactly. So you've gone to a slightly different section of the alphabet. Exactly. For exactly the same club. That okay. was forty-six pounds for my tightless driver. Mate, I think you've done a, an, you, that's a terrible, terrible decision. I think my driver has a massive advantage if you're over like 50 yours. Yards past me, every tee shot. There's something wrong. I mean, look at that. I think I may have made the point in there that tightless fairway woods are always good. Classic NV shaft, by the way. Tell me about it. Oh, I remember when all these came out pro shops up and down the land. All you saw was green shafts. So thirty-nine pound for that. You know what? Fair play. That's good. I would say that it's in a stiff. That's all right. Well, your flippy hands, mate. Best thought there was no out of bounds left tomorrow. This is where I spent my money. Oh, another Versa putter. Oh well, what a surprise. Let me guess. Oh, micro hinge with the insert and a super stroke grip. I mean, it, it's you might... similar to last year's. Oh my god, this is like, haven't you had one of these every single year? This is my most expensive singular golf club. How much? At £99. 99 quid. It's the for the I same use. club you always have. You're going for another driving iron, though. Well, obviously, I can't play golf without a driving iron. Um, I've got to be honest, I, I cannot remember hitting this. 712 U, no idea. What surprised me is how bloody expensive this club still was. It must have re retained its value. £87, and I had a last minute decision. Do I chop that in and actually get a better driver? I didn't. I, uh, listen, I'm not going to say you made the wrong decision. But if I was someone else, I would maybe say you made the wrong decision. However, you do hit two iron a lot. So. I do, a lot. When I'm playing proper golf, but actually playing a golf bit of challenge, I'm not actually statistically sure how many times I hit a long iron. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in that one. I'm, I'm not going to write that off. Um, irons. Right. Callaway X4 is actually something a little bit different. I feel like this is a set of irons that you would have picked because they're beautiful. Um, they cost me £163. Performance-wise... Time will tell. Well, you you would think that these are going to feel better than mine, definitely. Yeah. But and I'm all about the feel. I'm not about performance, Pete. I'm about feel and look these days. And that's three <laughs> three to wedge, and then a couple of. Okay. Have you seen that club before? Let me introduce you to that one, Pete. That's called a Cobra Trusty Rusty. I don't know if you've heard of them. Yeah, I mean, I, I doubt that you've ever used one of these before, right? This must be a this must be a completely new one for you again. This Seriously, be... have you just got bookmarked pages <laughs> on golf video? You just keep Listen, going back to the same one. Go for efficiency. I was in and out, no messing about. Um, that is forty six pound. It's fifty three degrees, which fills that void beautifully between my pitching wedge and my fifty eight degree. Don't look at it with those eyes. Don't look at it with those eyes. Okay. And then my last club. How old is that? I had to go. I had to go quite cheap on this okay. because I'll be honest, I had no money left. And I needed a, I needed a 58 degree. That's 29 pound, and that club, even that club, still puts me 11 pound, uh, nine pound over. So wow. I spent 509 pound plus my golf bit of loyal discount. Um, I get because of, of being a loyal customer. I've actually still, inevitably, I've still got 120 pounds to spend. But I'm going to stick with that. I'll, wow. stick, with, I'll stick with that. Incredible. You built up your loyalty just by buying the same clubs every year. How old is that? I, I've got to be honest, mate. I think, I think both our wedges selection isn't great. I, I, I would be surprised if you play well with your wedges tomorrow. Right, mate. That's it. We're done. Last ever golf bidder challenge selection over. It's gonna be emotional. It's gonna be very, very emotional tomorrow. So tomorrow we embark on the final ever golf bidder challenge. Rick versus Pete, who takes the glory? Who takes the crown? Video's coming soon. Thanks to Golf Bidder for letting us come and raid your warehouse again. We're gonna lock up, we'll post the keys back to the letterbox, and we'll hopefully see you again soon. Any last remarks, Pete? Well, what can I say? It is gonna be emotional. I mean, I'm hardly gonna be able to contain myself. However, it is gonna be one of the most dominating displays in Golf Bidder history, and there's only so emotional that I'll be able to get after 12 holes. So guys, big thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to both channels. First part is going to be dropping on Rick's. Second part on mine. It's only going to be a short one on mine, obviously. But stay tuned. It's going to be great. <laughs>